This video will cover question 4 from chapter 4, Quick Study. Prepare the journal entries to record each of the following sales transactions of a merchandise is merchandising company. The company uses a perpetual inventory system and the gross method. Again, this is basically what we did for the course activity 6, and this is now from the perspective of Costco. And if you need um, additional samples or summaries of the journal entries, go to page 184 in your textbook, Exhibit 4.12. April 1st sold merchandise for $5,200 with credit terms in 30, invoice date April 1st. The cost of the merchandise is $3,120. So we want to first record the merchandise that's being sold. So since we're using a perpetual system and we're given terms, we can assume that this is on account. So we're going to do accounts receivable, the asset for the full gross amount, 5200 And then we are making sales. So let's see, we're earning our revenue because the, titles of, the title of the goods are being transferred to our customer. And that will be the first entry. And then we will record. And because we are perpetual, we are also going to record the related expense, which is the cost of the goods being sold, $3,120. So we'll go ahead and recognize that on the same date, April 1st. And this is under the expense recognition principle we learned about in Chapter 1. Recognize revenue when you earn it. Recognize the expense when you incur it. We're incurring it at the time of the sale. So this expense we're going to be using is cost of goods sold. This is an expense account. It is a temporary account, what we learned in Chapter 3. And then we're going to credit the merchandise inventory asset account because we are what? Using our asset. Get rid of it. So we're going to reduce that. I'm not sure why it disappears like that. You click on it. And that will be the second part of the journal entry. So a perpetual system requires you to do the sales portion and the expense portion. Next one. The customer in April 1st sell returned $600 of merchandise for full credit. So they return what they bought previously, um, about three days later. So with a perpetual system, you're going to use the account sales returns and allowances. This is a contra revenue account. Normal balance is debit because it's offsetting or it's the opposite of the sales account. And we're going to go ahead and recognize this amount. And the reason why we do not debit the sales account is companies like to keep record of how much they're getting in returns and in adjustments and so forth. So by using this, we can actually identify um, the the amount of our returns or allowances given to our customers. And then we're going to go ahead and figure out the original payment method since it was on account. We'll go ahead and credit accounts receivable for the amount of the return. Now if they were to have given us cash in the get-go then we would have to um, credit our cash account. But since it was on account, accounts receivable. And again, because we are using a perpetual system we also have to record the related cost to it. So that merchandise that we sold for $600 actually cost us $360. So if you were to determine the gross profit, you would just take your sales amount minus your cost of goods sold. So that would give you a gross profit, but it didn't ask for all that. I'm just going to stick to this problem. And it goes on to say the merchandise which cost $360 is returned to inventory. So we're going to go ahead and put it back in the inventory. So that means we're going to increase our inventory account by debiting it. And then we're going to reduce our expense account, the cost of goods sold, by crediting it. And then we'll record that entry. All right, next we sold merchandise for $2,100. Terms were $110 in $30. So we sold merchandise again. Given the terms, we can assume that it's on accounts receivable. We're using the gross method, so we'll recognize the full amount. 
pull them out. And then we are going to credit our sales revenue account and record the entry. And then of course the cost of merchandise is $14.70. So we're gonna hopefully we're selling it for more than what it costs us. So we won't be in business very long. We'll go ahead and do the cost of goods sold. I like to refer to it as COGS. And then we're going to credit the merchandise inventory because we're getting rid of it. We're selling to a customer. And the last one said re receive payment for the amount due from the April 1st. Sales less the return on April 4th. Now, with this particular entry, because the terms are in 30, there is no discount that we're offering our customers for, to pay within that 30 day period. So what happens here is we're gonna just take the full amount, 5,200, and the amount of 600 that was returned. So looking at a T account for accounts receivable, we started off with 5,200, and we had a return of 600. So our balance will now be 4,600 which is just taking the original amount, subtracting the credits. So now we're at 4,600, that's our balance. And because it was in 30, then we're just gonna put in the full 4,600, since there's no discount given. And we're gonna what? Receive cash, so we're debit cash, and we will credit accounts receivable for the amount of cash the customer has given us. Now just FYI, just because you have the right to collect, you have accounts receivable, it does not guarantee that a customer will pay you the money that they owe you. And we'll talk more about um, accounts receivable valuation a little bit later on um, in the semester. And that concludes this video. So go ahead and check your work and have a summary of all the journal entries that we just prepared. Any questions, post in the discussion.